And good afternoon, how's it going? This is Jacko from Music Nation, welcome to the channel. Today we are looking at a very special uh, contact instrument, a contact sample library by Embertone, and it's called the Walker 1955 Steinway D, and it is a grand piano sample library. And uh, this is probably the most over-engineered sample library you'll ever see for a single instrument, it's pretty incredible. And um, so what I'm going to do today is run through uh, some of the sounds from a, a non-pianist point of view. I mean, I, I, I can play, but I can only just play enough to get me through what I need to do. I'm not a concert pianist or anything like that. And um, this project is not necessarily aimed at high-end concert pianists, although if you are one, you will certainly appreciate all the finer details with this. But, um, you know... Anybody from a uh, bedroom producer up to uh, people working with pretty much any type of music that requires a piano will definitely find a lot of a uh, lot of good things here uh, that will be um, very usable in your in your in your work because it's quite flexible actually the way that this is not just a stuffy old you know nine foot grand piano. <laughs> Um, although it's a beautiful instrument, they've added a whole bunch of kind of features in here which uh, allow you to kind of be a bit more flexible with the sound you get. So, um, this is the basic sound. And it's, it's one thing I do notice, it is quite quiet. I've zeroed this out to 0 dB on contact. I just wanted to start with this so you can get a feeling idea of how it kind of sounds out of the box, right? So now um, I'm running at the full 36 velocity layers, which I'll get into in a second, but this is basically everything maxed. And it has reverb on, that sounds nice. Great. Now I've also, this is a Yamaha motif which also has a fantastic piano in it which sounds nowhere near as realistic I think as this but just to kind of give you a comparison, are you probably familiar with the motif sound? I'll bring it in now, so this is motif's um, standard clav clavinova sound. So let me just mute this. So this is the clavinova sound. See, it's quite warm. As opposed to... It's not a bad thing, it's just that's the difference, right? Um, if you are familiar with the Yamaha, which is kind of similar to the Korg kind of piano sound, which is quite full, uh, warm, bassy, uh, probably pop orientated, I guess, if you had to be fair about it. This doesn't sound like that. Thin is not the right word, it's just way clearer, way uh, more open. lovely so there we go so first thing I'm going to do is turn it up because even when I bash it it's going nowhere near the meters so I'll give it a bit of a tune up here let's give it 6 dB so we can actually hear it even there it's nowhere near that there's my pedal here Right, so let's look through the interface here. So there's a number of panels here on this quite simplistic uh, 
uh, interface, which is cool. And you can see when I push my foot pedal, you see the whole piano moving up and down, so you get an idea of where the sustain is. It's quite cool. It has a uh, unicorda mode, which is like a soft pedal, I guess. So on the um, the real piano, what you, there was normally three pedals you can push, and one of them is the soft, and it actually moves the entire pedal board just a few, not, not a few millimeters, I think. And it, instead of playing the three strings, which are normally on a grand piano, it just plays the two, and it gives you a much softer sound, but it's really subtle, but it's a softer and um, different sound. And, and they've recorded these uh, uh, samples as well as the releases and all the velocities associated with it. So in a quarter mode, like for instance, let me just play a bit here. This is full normal. Actually, I'll just do it. So soft pedal. See, it's softer, but it's a different. It's got a more bell-like tone to it. It's lovely, eh? So that's that. So it's a soft pedal. Now the velocity is an interesting thing here. What it is, if you, the velocity is the dynamic range of the strike of when you hit the key, right? So when you hit it softly, you're, you're getting anywhere between 0 and maybe 10, 15. And when you really bash it, you get all the way up to 127. So it's scaled. So at um, 36, which I am now, it's 36 uh, possible uh, points which have been sampled. So it's very, very high resolution. You can drop this way back to 6. So it's a lot less, um, which affects the sound, but it also dramatically reduces the RAM. Um, so I'm going to reserve this because the problem with running so many uh, velocities, it takes forever to load them up. Now, this is a two and a half gigabyte fully installed uh, library. So um, it will take probably two minutes for me to reload this. OK, so I'll do I'll come back to this in a minute so you can hear the differences. It's subtle. It doesn't warrant running at 36 like I am now all the time. If you're writing, if you're just kind of comping stuff out, you're coming up with ideas, keep it on 12, 6, whatever. Um, go to 36 when you're ready to really push it down. But I thought I'd start off at the best, right? So this is, you know, everything going. Now there's this interesting mode here called staccato mode, which is, I guess, like when you play staccato on a piano, right, you normally play like very, like, Like that, right? So when you're in staccato mode here, it forces you to play like that. See, I'm not... I'm holding the notes down. Whereas if I was in non-staccato mode... See, they, they, they resonate, right? So... Um... It's, it's interesting, you know, it just means you can be, um, it's hard to be that staccato all the time. It just gives it a different dynamic, different feel, so yeah, something cool. I like it, it's neat. And I can imagine a few, you know, uh, places you could use that, you know, certainly in a sequence. But that's what it does, right? So um, staccato normal velocity, we'll come back to in a quarter, and and Round Robins turns on multiple... Um, strike recordings so let's shoot out to the color now this is where you can kind of muck with the way they record it now just to add a, actually while we're in the subject this is um this library comes as a light version and a full version which i have which has a single microphone recording the akg that they use and i can't remember exactly how they recorded it but it's uh, very nice but you can buy extra mic recordings and they have about six i believe extra each of them are the same, like 30 gigabyte download. And, um, I've had a listen to the demos of each. I mean, they have subtle differences. I, I purse, you know, if you you know buy them if you want to, you know. But they have um, different kind of characteristics, right? So this one here is just the single AKG version. Now inside this mic recording, you get very what you can you can muck with the uh, color of it. 
that's the color page, right? So uh, spread, which is the stereo width. So you can have it quite mono sounding. I'm just gonna turn this reverb off just for a second so we get a real. Right, and then in the middle somewhere, which is where it's defaulted to. And to quite wide. It just doesn't sound too bad actually. It's normally there's no phasing or anything weird, so it's it's you know this is a it's not just a tacked on kind of thing. They've thought this So that's that. That's quite cool. Um flip to perspective is interesting. So you can play as the pianist, what you hear, or the audience. So it just basically just inverts all the... Alright, so that's now backwards. As if you turn the keyboard around, so it's quite because the bass is right. Now this side, if I flip the perspective back to pianist player, now that side, quite cool. Because it does make sense when you were rec you're recording for the audience, you, this is what they would hear. So anyway, that's neat little touch. Now they have these um, three extra kind of sweetening things, I call them here, which are kind of tailor, there's a tailored EQ tone boost here. So I guess it's a smiley face, it's a little, it's really subtle. It sounds like they've just probably notched out a few little kind of bass things and a little bit of top end to it. Interesting, when I do um, take it off, I do peak a little bit. See that? That's peaking. That's interesting. So they definitely didn't have some notching in there. So yeah, that's cool. I'll leave that on in the meantime. Dynamics are compression, quite intense actually. Good for pop, I guess. And then a saturation. subtle but let me just add all these hmm. so not gonna light the world on fire but they are tailored for this um, for this uh, library so and then there is an equalizer pretty straightforward um, I guess subtly kind of oh actually the bass is quite heavy-handed not careful that Actually, sorry, it's a wee bit more aggressive than I thought, first thought. Oh yeah, okay, so it's very aggressive. Good. Especially since I've boosted the volume on this, that's quite um, a lot. So good, good, so that you can get a lot of movement out of that. So the equalizer for real heavy-handed stuff, you go with the sweetening just for nice little kind of touches. And of course the reverb. Now, the reverb is... Fantastic, it looks very similar, I'm pretty sure it is the standard contact reverb, however, um, I think they've, I'm sure they would have tailored it just to suit this instrument, because it does, sounds a lot nicer than it usually does. Very, very nice, um, what did I find? Was Actually, the digital one. Yeah, the digital one on some settings actually sounds really, really cool. You know, let's just leave that default in the meantime. Just pull that back just a touch. Okay, so that's the um, color panel there. The response, um, this is quite cool. You can mark with a sample start, so it gives you a like a real... Uh, fast attack kind of sound. You can change the, the dampening sound, so you'll hear that if I really crank it up. That's the noise of the pedal. Uh, the release volume is um, interesting, like it, they've sampled so much into each key, so you've got the um, you've got the attack velocity, how long you hold the note for, and then the release. And the release is based on how long you hold it. So there's so much going on in the background 
it's not just a single um, you know off and on or the, the 36 velocities I mentioned before it's inc insane I'd, I'd, something like 10,000 samples are in this just wacky wacky deep piano synth like the ultimate in deep recording um, the dynamic scaling is very neat actually I, I don't um, actually no I, this is something I would use actually quite a lot um, in fact probably more so than the uh, straight sound here because you can bring back the kind of the tone almost of the of the instrument then you get that real kind of cool just turn my pedal noise right down it's quite distracting how's that I mean we whack on a bunch of reverb of course that's going to be just So you can muck around with the response here and get lots of uh, ideas. And then finally, the details section. Now this is designed for uh, minimizing the, the uh, um, resources of the instrument. So you can disable a whole bunch of things which you might not be using, like the staccato, the soft pedal, etc. And by reducing the velocity levels you, again you can just kind of bring this bit like this is a really two and a half gig everything balls out um, you don't need to run all these things you see to get the same kind of sound so so all in all there's a lot of great um, flexibility in the controls here well thought out let me just show you how the velocities affect the um, sound. I'm just going to reduce that reverb off and I'll turn the tone and all this stuff here off. So we're back to basically default. Turn that off as well. Okay, so this is 36 velocity layers, right? I'll try and do some just a PGA here. almost almost lifelike I mean it's like hard to tell so I'll drop this back to six um. interesting I it's hard to it's hard to hear any difference, to be honest, but I can feel it. I really can. It's like, oh, it's like quite chunky feeling. It's like the piano is um, sticky or something, or oily. Or something. So, I don't know if you can tell, it's hard to really tell, I don't think anyone who was listening in the audience or recording would tell, but there certainly is a feel difference, and that might be what matters, right? So, but I'd, you know, the cool thing is, right, this is designed for uh, allowing any PC, well, most PC, as long as you've got a modern PC, right, but you're not maxed out RAM or something like that, right, you can still use this instrument. It's, yeah, it's quite cool. It just it feels a little um, restricted. That's probably the right word. But it's definitely a feel thing. So, so that's really the difference. But they, I think they recommend running at 18. And you might see here how slow this is to load. Now I'm running this off a standard IDE drive. This is not off an SSD. So that's in the indication to you guys who have not upgraded yet to SSD how slow this is to load. Well, it's not just this. I mean, this is you'll see the RAM is being chewed up here pretty quickly. I can probably still play. So this is 18. Hmm.
it still feels a little sluggish, but... Again, though, audibly, I, it's hard to tell. It really is. I think once you sequenced it, you would never know. I bet you if you sequence this as uh, six velocity layers and then um, when you're finished, crank this up to 36, there'll be no difference. In fact, sorry, you'd do the other way around, wouldn't you? Sorry. You'd start at 36 to get all the feel and then when you're finished, crack it back to six to do all your work inside your sequencer so you're not chewing up um, extra resources just on playback but yeah, it's not a lag it's just a just a muddy feel is the right word let me just shoot back to my um, motif here for a second yeah you can really tell the motif is really immediate now So that's, that's what it is, right? It's not a sound thing. Let me just crank this up to 30. Now it'll take some time to reload. but um, So there we have it. I mean, it's a fantastic instrument. Um, we have a full review on Music Nation right now, so definitely go and read more about it. Um, Embertone do a well-known effect for doing this level of crazy deep sampling, and it's no surprise, to be honest, that this is how crazy they've gone with this. The fact that you can buy up to six extra, I believe, variations of this of different microphone recordings. So you can just really <laughs> go if piano is the most important part of your 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 work or the music you're writing or whatever, I mean, yeah, get what get this at least and maybe other other microphone recordings as well so you get even more flexibility. But I love the fact that you can chuck on the soft pedal permanently and then and we're just about loaded here and then you can mark with those um the responses here to turn it from a quite a lively sound to a really nice dark felt piano type of sound you know and we fully loaded here just about this will do so this is now with uh 30 velocity layers oh immediately That's good enough for me, I reckon. That feels more like the mo motif now. Very immediate. Maybe it's a little brighter too, I think. I might be just kidding myself a wee bit. It sounds like a touch brighter than the 6 velocity layer. But it's not much in it. Very little. So, so there we have it. So, um... I will leave that there, I think, and uh, of course, for much more in-depth uh, written uh, review on this Walker 1955 Steinway D, please go to musicnation.co.nz. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching, and uh, we have more videos online and coming, so um, hope you enjoy the channel, and thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time. Cheers, bye.